Alright, so I haven't done this in a while, and I figured before I start anything else, might as well get the last football game, the Super Bowl. And I'm not going to do it alone. This time I got my buddy, Buddy. Say hi, buddy. Hey, folks. How you doing? So, um, what do you want to do? You want to wrap up the the playoffs as a whole real quick, since I never really touched on any of it? Just knock yeah, it out that. real quick, right? get warmed up while we, uh, before we talk about the main game? Yeah, we can do that. That sounds like a good idea. All right. Um, just to make sure I'm going to turn your volume up a little bit. I think I could do that. Should be all right. Okay, um, you want to start NFC first or AFC? Well, we'll start AFC. That's where our Ravens come from. True. All right, so I guess we start off with uh, the first week, which we had, uh, what was it, Kansas City and um, Oakland in Oakland? No, they were in Kansas City now. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Kansas City was um, division because they had to buy. Yeah, so it was in it was in uh, Kansas City, and then you had uh, Pittsburgh and Miami. Yes. So that was uh, one decent game for a little while, but not really, and then one kind of blowout game. You're right. They had to buy. Well, okay. That now we're. Yeah. Cause the first game in the season was that. Or uh, I'm talking about the wild card. You're right. Because the, the, the Raiders, they had probably one of the most heartbreaking season endings that you could ever even imagine. Yeah, with Carr going out. Oh uh, yeah, they were flying so hard, so high, and next thing you know, Derek Carr breaks his leg. And you know that may have been the one thing that led him not to get MVP this year too. Because had he have stayed in, that may have been a team that uh that may have gotten their buy back if that was possible. I'm not sure, but um with him going out when he did, he knocked them out pretty much of the whole thing. They were relying on him all year, and he and he dipped out right at the end. Yeah, I know, and they were flying so high. It was a sad ending for Oakland. It really was to go to Houston, and I'll tell you. If Derek Carr was in that game playing, I have no question in my mind the Raiders would have won that game. No question. They, they may even be in the Super Bowl tomorrow. It could be. Could be. Um, they. I mean, let's not count them out, I guess, if Carr was in a in the picture. So, uh, well, I, yeah, that's pretty much that. I mean, and we saw how far Houston went, but we'll get into that later. So, um. Yeah, so then you had Pittsburgh and Miami. I forgot that that was a wild card game. I was going to just talk right in on uh, the actual games, but I guess it's part of it. Yeah. So, yeah, how about them Steelers in that game? Uh, that game was all Steelers. I don't even think Miami showed up. Well, they had that, uh, that backup quarterback of theirs. I um, can't remember his name off the top of my head, but it wasn't Ryan Tannehill. Matt Moore. And Matt Moore was his name. I know that because I have somebody. Shout out to my friend Matt Moore. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, he went to school with me and, um, played basketball, actually. We played football a little bit, but anyway, that's him. But yeah, Matt Moore did really good towards the end of the Dolphins season. So to see them go down like that with him, I don't know. I mean, as a Ravens fan, it kind of hurt because it's the Steelers, but. You know, I'm not a Miami fan. I'm not. I don't. I'm not gonna put over Miami on that because I'm not their fan. Yeah, that that game was a total train wreck for Miami. And you gotta think it also comes down to being as big of a game as it was. And it, I'm not gonna say it's the same as the Raiders because obviously I think Matt, um, Derek Carr is a lot better than Ryan Tannehill. But just the idea you're going into that type of game without your starting quarterback. And you got to think, too, Pittsburgh's definitely a lot more uh, well-seasoned when it comes to playing under pressure. I mean, oh, they're not the leading Super Bowl team for no reason. So, uh, I didn't oh, – I, I mean, I, I knew it walking into that game. I have a couple of Miami fans. Shout out to um, – I mean, not fans of me, but uh, friends that are fans of them. Shout out to my buddy um, Ronald, but he knew it. I knew it. We all knew it. Miami was not walking out of that game. 
I mean, if if the Ravens were able to do them like that, imagine what the Steelers was going to do. And, that's, it was and that's much coming, the same deal. And that's coming from Ravens fans. Yeah, you figure the Dolphins came to Baltimore and got smashed. And they go to Pittsburgh and get smashed. It's because it's two very similar teams. So we also had um NFC that weekend. Uh, oh, the game I liked was Seattle and uh, Detroit. What a letdown from Detroit. Well, they're used to that. Yeah, that's their fans, but um, I mean they're also playing against Seattle, and I'm pretty sure yeah it was at Century Field, so that has a lot to do with it. I mean you got a team that's a playoff season team versus a team that's just getting there, meaning like they were in last year I believe, or was it the year before? I think it was the year before. Yeah. Um, maybe they missed last year, but they've been they've been working hard for the past. 10 years to fix their null legacy, but it still remains null. Yeah, and plus, like you say, Century Link Field, that's, that's one of the hardest places in the NFL to play. Indeed. Unless you're Seattle Seahawks, that is. And you know, the funny thing about that is, I don't think that it would have made a difference where they played. Because you, you had Thomas Rawls playing at high level running, and their receiving core is... I think one of the most underrated because you give all these Antonio, uh, you know, Jim, or um, uh, what, what's the Pittsburgh's last name? Jones? Uh-huh. Antonio Jones, Hul- no, Julio Jones, and uh, Antonio um, starts with Brown. Yeah, Brown, I'm sorry. Had a little mind fart there. But uh, you got, you know, guys like do. Them, but then where's the Doug Baldwin's? Where's the Jermaine Curses? Jermaine Curse, yeah. Where's the Tyler Lockett's? Tyler Lockett, yeah. And then where is um? You got your tight end Jeremy Graham. Yeah, Jimmy Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham and I also. I don't Jeremy. I don't know why. I had for years, Jeremy. At least it's not Jermaine. <laughs> right. Yeah, but yeah, Jimmy Graham, um, Luke Wilson. They got an outstanding receiving core alone, and then you add in the other Tyler Lockett on special teams, and you got Rawls um, handling the starting lineback position. I mean, it, it it's just a really good offense. I think Rawls is going to step right into where um, Marshawn Lynch left. Absolutely. They're already calling him Little Beast Mode. He is, and he had a heck of a game against Detroit. Yeah. He had a lot of yards. I think he had, I'm probably way off of this, but he had, uh, before the, the first half ended, he had, I would say, close to 100 yards rushing already. Well, being on the phone, I don't have my NFL app um, open, so I can't really get the stats, but I, I mean, I'd believe it. I believe I'm not 100% it. sure, but I think it I'm was pre- I mean, like that. I mean, they, with all the receivers they have, they throw to, or they they run with Rawls a lot. They throw to him too, but I, I, when I say run with Rawls, I mean play him. They, they, you, they use their running game. And I think that may have been a problem in their Atlanta game, is that they weren't going to it. I think that's what people were talking about, but we'll get to that one because we still had um, Green Bay and... Um, New York Giants. How'd you feel about this game? Because I gotta tell you, I was a little surprised. I was surprised. I was a little, I guess you could say, off put by it because I was kind of hoping the Giants would win it. Me too. And I, I didn't. I, I thought that it was gonna be close because you had this Green Bay team, which, as soon as their quarterback snapped back into the game, they were on a killing spree, and it didn't and, stop here. And it was funny because that game was actually competitive in the first half. Whatever happened in the New York Giants locker room during halftime, uh, whatever happened, they, they came out in that second half, and it was like watching a totally different New York Giants football team. Sad. They had some, they, they had some miscues, some drop passes in the first half, and a uh, couple of blown assignments on defense. And I was reading a few things, not, not official things on the Internet. You always get all that kind of stuff on the Internet about they had big arguments in the locker room at halftime the New York Giants and things like that and arguing about who ain't doing their job and yada yada. 
And I think that actually might be true because, like I said, when they came back out in that second half, that did not look like the same football team. Mm. They were they went from good to horrible. Almost makes you wish that there was never a halftime there. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, usually I, I'm being a Ravens fan. I'm either really hoping for the halftime by now, or I'm sitting there feeling comfortable. But never do you want to feel like things could go downhill from here and that's not saying much for the Giants no especially a team that won the Super Bowl um in almost it was like what a season or two in in between um like about six years ago seven years ago maybe yeah I think it was six years ago it couldn't have been more than two three years apart at the most yeah and both with Eli Eli's probably coming on that tail end of his career i'm not going to say the end i'm going to say the tail end like probably yeah. the last fourth he's in the fourth quarter of his career we'll just we'll we'll, we'll keep the football terms going alive that's the funny thing when it comes to uh professional sports and athletes that we like and we follow uh, you always have this mindset like oh this guy you know he's eli manning and you never really think oh he's been in the league 10 years 11 years you never really think about that. No. It's almost like this guy's immortal. He's forever 24 years old. And he's still having winning seasons. Right. When you have other guys who've been in the season just as long as him, like your Jay Cutlers, and they're not doing so well. And shout out to Cutler because at one time he was a top quarterback. He was. I mean, he was a beast. I mean, Romo was getting benched finally. But there's another example. These are all guys that came in around similar times. Maybe not the same time, but it's call, it's uh, it's probably like that. Um, cl- like I don't know. What do you call it? Uh, I know what I call them: Jay Cutler, Tony Romo, and guys that fit that bill. I call them the glass cannons. Well, what I'm more more or less saying is guys that came out around that time, like Tom Brady, could be thrown in there. It was in like the early two thousands. Actually, sit back and think how long Tom Brady's actually been around. Yeah. I mean, you think about him, and like the back of your head, you're you don't even give any thought to how long he's actually been there. It's been like 17 years. Well, I was gonna suggest us going over the next round NFC first, but let's roll off that Tom Brady, um, first Super Bowl appearance versus the Texans, who had just beaten the uh, red hot um, Oakland Raiders. Minus Derek Carr. Um, right. So, all right, we got a team here that is number one seed. And th- this game, I, I was talking to you uh, while you were watching it, and I was really surprised to hear that you were telling me that th- the Houston Texans were keeping them alive. Now, I'm not going to say that they don't have a bad defense because they got a great defense. And their offense has potential. But it's been lackluster all year, and I just didn't see much in this game other than a Patriots win. And, you know, at one point you you gave me a reason to root for the Texans, saying that if Texans managed to beat uh, New England in that game, that Kansas City would host a game. But, oh, man, it just wasn't something I was planning on getting anything out of. So, I mean, you told me that. They were giving you something at least early on. So talk to me about that. The Texans played a great football game against the Patriots. The only problem was I mean, their defense played excellent. The defense did everything it needed to do to beat the Patriots. The special teams, they got those turnovers. And as I was saying, defensively, they were getting the Brady. They were getting his head a little bit. They were knocking him down, sacking him, hitting him. And the defense, they weren't giving up a whole lot. The Patriots did not go on, like, this big scoring rampage against the Texans. But the defense and the special teams for Houston, they did their job. They did it well. The only problem was Houston's offense couldn't do anything. And against the Patriots, that's a death sentence. And this Houston offense, too, like, what's wrong with them? They got DeAndre Hopkins. He's in the top five as far as receivers. 
you got Brock Osweiler. I mean, why was he such a dud this year? He played for the Broncos last year while Peyton Manning was on his um, little foot injury. I call it the I got benched because Kansas City scored five uh, times on me and intercepted eight times on me. But <laughs> so I mean that. But that's all there and said. But um, I think it's just the. Fundamentally, I think it was just Denver was a better offense than Houston. Uh, absolutely, better, absolutely. Better offensive line, better run game, receiving core. DeAndre Hopkins is good. I think but, that might be it too, because it's like if you don't have a run game, your your offense is going to get exposed. And plus, you think um, Peyton Manning, the way he played the game, he was the ultimate pocket passer. Even though he got rid of the ball pretty quickly, he was that pocket passer guy. So in order for that to work, you need that offensive line that can hold for a he, little bit of extra time if it has to. And I think that's just the way the Broncos were built. He was very methodical on the field, wasn't he? Yes. I think that's a really good way to put it. Because he, he played very conservative when he had to. And played very aggressive when, he, when the time came. But he was a field controller and a ball controller and a clock controller. That's right. why he will go down as one of the best of all times. And I guess anybody sitting behind him and a team that operates in his way, they might be able to throw somebody in that position that's maybe a student of the game right now, but not acting on his level, so to speak. And, you know, kind of guide him along, push him through, you know. Make things easy for them, cause they've they've got the the man on the corner coaching them anyway, because he's an on field coach and off field coach even when he is down. But yeah, that that's that. Um, so anyway, what what do you think was the key factor in the Texans losing this game? I just think um, offensively they couldn't do enough. I mean. Like I said, defensively, in uh, their special teams unit had some turnovers, and they were getting the Brady. They had him frustrated. But their offense just, I mean, their defense held the Patriots down a little bit, but the Patriots are still able to put points up. You're never going to stop them totally. And I think that that's why the Patriots ended up taking off towards them, because it's like the offense gave up. They were throwing interceptions, having fumbles. Yeah. If not one, the other. I know at least one happened at least once or twice. And it cost it to the game getting away from them. I mean, easy. don't give Tom Brady easy touchdowns. So he'll take every one of them. Right. I don't have my computer in front of me. I don't know stats. I don't, I don't really remember all the ends of that. That's okay. Game. But I know that's what I thought about. It was just the fact that the Houston offense just simply cannot do anything. And against the Patriots, like I said, that's a death sentence because – you're not going to stop the Patriots completely. They're going to score points. You can slow them down, but you better be able to score some points. Yeah. You know? I mean, Patriots are a team that has a great, great defense and an even better offense. So yeah. if they're if you can't get past their great, great defense, you're doomed. You can stop their offense a couple drives a game. But they're right. going to find a way to put points on the board almost every drive. And they'll England hit you 3-7, 3-7, 7-7, 3. They don't care. New, England, New England's one of them teams, if you hold them to a field goal a few times, they don't care. No. They got points on the board. They're going to score touchdowns eventually. Yep. I mean. Just, you got to just take your hat off to Bill Belichick. Absolutely. I mean, he sure has created this dynasty. The evil empire. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, ever since, ever since Belichick and Brady, they're like the, the, the twin towers of the football. Absolutely. I mean, what a team. I mean, they've even established a running game with uh, LeGarrette Blunt. Oh, it's not just LeGarrette Blunt. They got Deion Lewis. They got James White. Yeah, but that blunt, he's been he's been the star for a while now. Yeah. I mean, that, that's who I think is going to be the defi deciding factor tomorrow. But, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's what I think pretty much it was, is that the um, offense gave up and just 
poured it down on their defense. Because once you once you give up in the game, it it the the other team will try and pull you out, but not if you give them a, a hole to dig out of. And that's pretty much what they did. Because I mean, they would get the ball back, throw a turnover of some sort, and then the Patriots would then have easy yard range, bam, score. So basically, by giving up, you're sucking the life out of your defense. Oh yeah, because your defense. I mean. After that, it was over. I mean, so yes, I, I feel like it was maybe a little more than offense not being able to, but I feel like they gave up. It, it was a team that had already decided it wasn't happening. Like I said, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm pretty sure I can guarantee that the um, uh, the time of possession was pretty lopsided in that game probably. Especially towards the end. Absolutely. I mean, the Houston defense, they played a game, a great game, but it's, you can't have your defense on the field 70% of the game. Now, how about what happened in Arrowhead, though? You're going to have to tell me about that. Because yeah. as much as yeah. I've read, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I honestly could not believe it. Steelers went in there, and they won, like, with nothing but field goals. And how does that happen? Because this is a team that... Fucking um, excuse me, but um um Alex Smith, he could easily have been the quarterback of the year if it wasn't for ending early. He still pretty much could have. I mean, this is a team that at one point they led the the league in wins as far as the past seventeen games. They said, and this was early in the season. They were they had maybe one loss or two one. Or th- Two losses, probably. I think it was two losses. It was still early in the season, but it was two losses, and they were coming off of last year where their season, they finished off, um, it, they were 11-5, and five, but those five losses were consecutive, and they had 10, lo- 10 wins consecutive. So that means if you take at, at least the last 10 perfect games, and then you put them on their season there, they had like, 16 and 2. Right. And they 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 got knocked out early last year, but uh, I just can't see it. Maybe it's uh, I'm grasping straws here. Maybe it's Kansas City as a streak team. They go on, you know, a bad streak and a hot streak. Uh, a bad streak and a hot streak. You know, you know I I, I like them Chiefs. I, they're not they're not the Ravens to me, but I like them Chiefs. They're a really fun team to watch because you get a little bit of everything from them on the field. They got an offense that has has some room to build. I'll admit that, but it's it's got enough to get the job done with Travis Kelsey out there and you got um Jerry Macklin out there. And then you got surprise effects like uh Demetrius um what's their fridge's name? Do you remember his name? No, Dontarius Poe. There you go. The guy that made that trick play in the, uh, their their last game against uh, Denver. You want to know who my favorite Kansas City Chiefs player is? Who's that? He's one of the most dynamic players in the league, Tyreek Hill. Yeah. That guy's crazy. Yeah, the he is really good. I've heard, I've, I've heard his name plenty of times this year. Wow, oh, he's a major, major playmaker for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's constantly doing something big, just about every week. You know, and it's the same. It's a shame because this is a home game. This is a team coming off of a bye. And did the bye hurt them? That's the age-old question. A lot of people say they would rather their team not have it. I mean, look what the Steelers did. They they yeah. came into this game. A, a home, it was not a home game. It was an away game, a, an away playoff game, and they played from the bottom up. How many points did the Steelers have in that game? Fifteen. How how many uh, points did you say that they uh, racked up? Yeah, the Steelers. I think it was fifteen points. It was all field goals. Yeah, it, it was it was it was a low amount. And if you had told me, you came to me and said, "I'm I'm not going to tell you the outcome of the game. I just want you to guess." Who won? Steelers only scored 15 points. What do you think happened? I said the Chiefs won the game. 
Oh, yeah. And I would have been wrong. Uh, I would have said they, they, Chiefs fucked them up. Yeah, it's like, so what happened? Oh, well, Chiefs only were able to pull out 12 points. Mm-hmm. You're kidding me. Steelers played some good defense in that game. On the road in a place like that, it's, it's good. All right, but well, um, it is what it is. How about, uh, I don't want to get to the other one yet. Um, Green Bay and uh, Dallas. I want to talk about that first. You I know, just I just went from one one high to a low, and I'm not trying to do that again with the letdown of Seattle just yet. So let's talk about this. Okay, you know, Green Bay. I kind of knew they were going to lose the NFC champ. I'm not trying to go ahead, but I'm going to say I kind of knew they were going to lose the NFC championship just because the way that game went with Dallas. Green Bay totally was just dominating Dallas. They were blowing them out up until halftime. And then, you know, um, uh, Prescott hits Bryant, miracle play, touchdown Cowboys. How about that? And then it goes to halftime. Then it comes back. And in that second half, the defensive backs, the safeties, linebacker, just about every defensive position there is on the football field, the Packers players, they were just dropping like flies on that defense. And the Cowboys, they came back and almost won the game. <laughs> it's amazing, dude. Amazing football, dude. It, yeah, it took a, an amazing pass from, I think it was, who did Rodgers hit? I think it was maybe Devontae Adams. I might have the names wrong. That that miraculous little tippy-toe sideline catch. <laughs> and then the field goal. Yeah. And that's what did it. But it was just amazing to me how the Cowboys, I know they're great. They're good with them two rookies. How they were able to, you know, they're getting blown out. And... The whole game, like, the momentum just shifted. You know, it's, totally. it's, it's funny how momentum of the year can play a factor in this, too, because the Cowboys, they went into the Green Bay and ran right through their defense. And then this is happening in in Dallas now, and they couldn't they couldn't pull it together. They couldn't do it in time enough to finish the job. I mean, that's what they did right there. I think that's what the reason why Green Bay won is because they were able to do more with the time they were given, whereas Dallas was not. You can't start in the second half and not and 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 be down like that. I don't know what was happening with that first half. I mean, because I don't really follow either team like strict into the number and player by player, but. I can I tell you. That first half, was it that Green Bay's defense was playing that good, or was it just the Cowboys' offense was that awful? I can tell you right now. Was Dak Prescott having butterflies? I don't know what was going on with that, because Elliott was doing pretty good. It's just the rest of the offense was just horrible. It's not even that. It's just Rodgers. Oh, yeah. Well, it's Rodgers. It's Rodgers. Rodgers is – it's, it was Rodgers. Rodgers was – the veteran elite quarterback in this position. This is the man. This is what elite's all about. It's all. It's. It's about taking your team from an average record and pulling them back into the playoffs and being able to do this type of stunt. Now, granted, they didn't go all the way this year. I'm sad about that. It's but, poise. Yeah. And understanding when you're up against a team who has been run by magic all year. Where, where you're a team that runs off of skill, knowledge, and stamina. But it was just crazy watching that game. Just the way the momentum. I don't, there's not very many games where you see a momentum shift that drastic. But it did. Like I said, the Packers, they were blowing them out. They had them by the throats. They were choking them. They were almost dead. And <laughs> next thing you know, bam, Des Bryant touchdown. Halftime. Both teams come out. Packers defensive players, they start dropping like flies. Cowboys are the Cowboys again. Bang, bang, boom. They get right back in it. Comes down all the way to the end. 
Miracle pass by Rogers, sideline twinkle toe catch. <laughs> it was almost like the, it was scripted. <laughs> Funny you say that. Hmm? Funny you say that. Yeah. Now here you go. Um, Seahawks versus uh, Falcons in Atlanta. And I gotta say, I walked into this game nervous as hell for re for a good reason. And, you know, I, I left out disappointed. Um, now, and the funny thing is, is like, this is another one where I was kind of following you, and I was also at work at the time while the game was on. So um, I wasn't able to really pay attention as much as I'd like to, especially with this being an early game. And uh, they played during my, my store's early dinner rush. So most of the game, I was out of loop. But, but, yeah, you were telling me that Seattle looked really good on offense. And Especially their first drive. Yeah, I was, I was really hoping uh, that that was going to stick around. Because when you look really good on offense versus Atlanta this year, then that's saying something. And another example of it just not being enough. And uh, you're playing against another team who's clutch in the playoffs. And... You think it was home field advantage? You think Atlanta's just a better team? You think, what do you think? Uh, unfortunately, you're a Seahawks fan, but I'm going to say it. I think the Falcons were the better team this time around. It's, it's, you know what? They played a really close game in Seattle, and I'll be the first one to say that Seattle won, but Atlanta should have won that game. It is what it is. I mean... Yeah, they laid an egg there, but then they also took an egg inside of Foxborough. See, that's the funny thing about football. You just never know. Yeah, but Tampa Bay, I mean, they almost made it this year. That's a tough upcoming football team. They, I mean, shoot. They they laid in, they, they Yeah, Tampa took the egg home in that game, but then turned around next week and beat Chiefs and uh, Arrowhead. So, uh, I mean... They, that's just uh, Steelers managed to do it in this round, but it is what it is. The thing I think that hurt the Buccaneers this year was their running back situation. Their star running back was kind of in and out, in and out, in and out. Well, what about the thing that hurt the Seahawks the most in this game? Just uh, inconsistency. Yeah, and um, would that be the defining factor for why Atlanta was better, or what was? So here we are, last round. Um, where do you want to start? You want to you want to start? Uh, keep it going. AFC, NFC. Yeah, we might as well. Steelers and Patriots. What's up? That game. Now I wanted the Patriots to win that game, but I also wanted it to be a better game than it was. I don't know what in the world Pittsburgh was doing on defense. That was horrible. I mean, if you watch like footage and like replays of that, you know, your your corners are lined up to cover these receivers. They're covering these New England receivers. They're like eight yards away from them before the ball's even snapped, and they're dropping off coverage, letting them run wide open. And it was a circus. I don't, I don't know what in the world happened with Pittsburgh's defense in that game. And this is that New England offense too, when there's so many ways to hit you. Yeah, I mean, it looked like they had no clue what to do. There was this line in a battle rap where the guy says, I got so many ways to hit you, you think I'm playful with you. And I think that's, <laughs> I think as funny as of a line that is, it's kind of how it was a little bit. And, you know, it, it was. Were Steelers being a top defense type of team, um, they, they should have known better because this isn't the Ravens. They're not going to just give you easy options on offensive plays to – defend 
They're, they'll hit you with a couple screen passes, not nine million in a game, like oh, the Ravens. Yeah, he can easily put a defense together against us. I mean, I mean, when you're going screen after screen after screen. Yeah. Oh, it's first and ten. One yard pass. It's third and ten. Let's do. Let's do a screen. <laughs> yep. No, that's not how New England works. They'll they'll throw a couple bombs, run a couple plays, do a few screens. They they have a they have so many weapons. They don't need to rely on any specific strengths that they may think that they have, because they have strengths in all of them. Yeah, you don't see the Patriots uh, when it's like third and eleven. They don't throw no one yard pass. They they don't make third third and eleven. <laughs> they're like at third and four and that's your best chance maybe if there's a penalty they might yeah Mr. Perfect's getting a penalty Had, did John Cena ever get a penalty <laughs> maybe not on wrestling oh no <laughs> he was never disqualified <laughs> so yeah. um so I mean yeah Pittsburgh lost I was happy about it, but I I didn't care. Only reason why I would care is if Pittsburgh lost, just because I knew it was about to happen. I could see this coming a mile away. Especially um I don't remember whether this was the first game or not, but knowing that uh the outcome of the Green Bay and Atlanta game, I knew that it was about to be a jump ship contest, at least in Pittsburgh. But half the NFL is now riding against New England Patriots. And, you know, I'm not going to be one of them. New England beat Pittsburgh. New England has a chance to tie Pittsburgh's um, overall Super Bowl win record with Tom Brady alone. And oh, yeah, if he wins, it's his fifth right. And I just, I never had a reason to... Uh, Root for Atlanta, which we should talk about that game real quick. Atlanta versus Green Bay. I kind of want to roll along so we can talk about the Super Bowl a little bit too. But uh, Atlanta and Green Bay. So um, Green Bay just put out the um, the mega, mega, mega popular Dallas Cowboys in Dallas, and Atlanta just takes out uh, uh, Seattle, and then we got another repeated performance by uh, Atlanta. And it just it just totally yanks away everything that you said about Green Bay the week before. Yeah, I kind of like I said, I kind of knew that was coming. Just the way that the Cowboys were able to come back in that second half, and the way the Packers' defensive players were just dropping like flies. I just thought there's no way this defense is healthy. It's not. They're all like second and third string guys that you know these big key positions, and they got to cover Julio Jones. They got to cover Tyler Gabriel. They got to worry about Devonta Freeman. Uh, well, what's his face, Coleman? Well, what about the uh, Atlanta defense? I mean, to be able to do all that and then hold them. They played good. They did. And I just, I kind of had this idea that I did not think Green Bay was going to beat them. Do you think that maybe um, Rodgers is a little hot? Uh, Spree was a little gassed out by the end of that Cowboys game and that's why it ended up getting so close and that's why we had a Green Bay offense that was not able to produce that much in, in the next game follow yeah that plus your your star receiver Jordy Nelson was out there playing with broken ribs that, that could never be helpful no or healthy at that I think Devontae Adams, when uh, Jordy Nelson was out, because he took that hit against the Giants, the, the crown of the helmet went right in the ribs. And he was out um, the, the following week. And I think Devontae Adams was getting the majority of the catches, and he's a great receiver. Hmm. But he's not Jordy Nelson. But he was getting his heavy workload, and it was working against the Cowboys. And I think... Them putting Jordy Nelson in that game with broken ribs, I think they kind of favored him, even though he was kind of, like, half crippled. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think that's something I'd have done. The guy with broken ribs, he wouldn't have been my number one. Well, I mean, with all that, it's all said and done now. 
And, you know, it was nice to see AFC win the Pro Bowl and know that a lot of Ravens played parts in that. Shout out to everybody that played in the Pro Bowl. That means y'all did your thing and, and you, impre- you, you, sh- you showed somebody something. So. I know something funny about the, uh, the Pro Bowl. Yeah, real there quick. Was, I think it was one Cleveland Browns player in the Pro Bowl. Um, Bless his heart. The lineman. He's actually a really good lineman. I can't pull his name out of my hat to save my life. But B- bless his I heart. Know, I bless know his him. heart. He's good. But anyway, it was funny. After the Pro Bowl was over to AFC 1, he put out, a, I think it was a tweet on Twitter. And he's going, had a really nice time at the Pro Bowl. I doubled my win count. And we're just... <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Huh. I, doubled, I doubled my win total. Shout out to the Cleveland Browns. I'll put yep. them over any day because we're the only two that ever will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the main game. We got uh, the evil empire, the the great dynasty of Belichick and Brady still running strong. The New England Patriots, the number one AF seed, making it to the top, showing them why they're the number one seed versus the number two seed in the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC. I guess showing them why they're the number two seed. Um, watching uh, the Dallas Cowboys fall, so that would put them at number one in that following week. But, um, so this is what I see. Um, now take away everything else, because there's a lot of factors to be thrown into why I'm rooting for who I'm rooting for, but um what i see in this game is you got two teams that are structured similarly but there's a big edge in in one space for one of the teams and a slight edge in another and i think that the only reason why i'm going to give a big slight edge is because i'm going to throw in the fact that um a lot of the, a lot of the the big part of the edge is due to the um, the seniority of this defense and that's i'm saying defense as far as new england is a lot better than uh atlanta falcons and i think that uh, with me saying that offense is slightly that like i say receiving part of offense maybe the all-around offense i'd even give a slight better to um New England there, but a lot of people think that this red hot offense of the Falcons is not only superior but enough to get it done against this defense. And again, this is a defense that has seniority. I mean, these are all veterans on both sides of the football field with this uh New England team and you got this Falcons team and they they have a lot of great points to their team they've had an explosive offense all year they've beat very very formidable opponents and i mean does it keep going or when does it end and is, is it enough hmm. i don't know I, I think it's gonna be an epic super bowl i really do i think you have coming into this game, I think the headline could say, you have the battle-tested evil empire taking on the fiery falcons. And now, what do you think, too, as far as, um, I think we could probably both agree that the defense, the, the Patriots have the upper hand, but if you take the offenses, uh, what do you think, honestly? I'm rolling with the Patriots for the better offense. I think versatility and numbers gives them a high, a high, um, what I'm going to say about that, um, statistically, the, um, the Falcons offense is actually set in record numbers, and they are the number one ranked offense in the NFL, I believe. But that can't, that does not take anything away from New England. Because when you're taking, you know, Belichick, Brady, and the Patriots, those stats, they go out the window when you walk into a game like this. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm, I'm talking about. Do. It's just the way they game plan. Because to be honest, when when it comes to things like that, that that's for the year. I, I and I do get it, but when I when I decide who has the more edge 
on both sides of the field. I try and take in a different things that add on to that that stats can't really portray like uh, Super Bowl experience and playoff experience and endurance experience and you've been hot for how long but how how long are you going to stay hot you know just different types of things that stats may not cover I think it comes down to coaching too it's preparation Yes. nobody is uh better coach than the Patriots and nobody is more prepared on game day than the Patriots. Oh, dude. They go, they go into their preparations with one sole thing in mind. It's not only just about what do we do good. They focus on what do you do good and they try to come up with ways to take that away from you. Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, two people that most AFC followers or even football fans claim they despise but would take them on their teams in a heartbeat I would not be surprised if the Patriots game plan on doing just turnovers interceptions I mean I would not be surprised if the Patriots defense has two three turnovers tomorrow just because of the way that they prepare they already they know your strengths and weaknesses and they focus on what you do best and they try to take that away from you. So what do you think? Getting uh Matt Ryan's head early with some uh turnovers? I mean they gotta be quick turnovers. If they were honest mistakes it's, they're gonna they're gonna try and support him, but I I mean I kinda agree. I think that um you know, you put some put a little a little something on the quarterback's mind because Matt Ryan's not he's he's not a very a very old quarterback he's had a uh, season wise he's had about he's had about six seven seasons tops that's still decent that's not bad but it's not a whole lot I just wonder if there's a balloon effect on the head because you know all this stuff on you know the media about you know sports about um the Falcons, they broke a record for this stat, the other stat, yardage, and their number one scoring offense. And then just today, it comes out, Matt Ryan is named offensive MVP. And being kind of new to this, this spotlight like this, I kind of wonder if that's going to affect anything. Well, he's not entirely new. He did win Rookie of the Year the same year that he was that Flacco was – uh. Nah, it wasn't the same year. I'm sorry. They just made it further in the playoffs. Right. Yeah, so, no, RG3 won rookie of the year, the year I'm thinking of. But, um, yeah, so, I, I, I think it's going to come down to a good game that I really can't tell who's going to win. But if my logic had to get me to pick, I would go with the Patriots. If my... Um, you know, my personality came into play. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was that it seems like Pittsburgh fans as a whole, um, at least in the community of Pittsburgh, have announced, <laughs> this is funny, that they are now 100% back in the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> it's like a political thing. Yeah. We are announcing that we are officially back. The Atlanta Falcons. Right. It's it's like uh, it's like they they decided to pull for Trump because Hillary got voted in instead of Sanders. Oh, you remember that message I sent you earlier? Uh, that guy that came into where I work. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he's rooting for the Falcons because he needs to uh, pay his respects to the great state of Georgia. Because Georgia, uh, they overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump. And the Patriots, they're up there in that uh, New England area. And they all uh, voted for Hillary Clinton. So screw them. Go Falcons. See, I'm but like, that's the opposite effect, though. I'm like, that's, I like it. That's, that's the opposite effect. Thing. At least I can rock with uh, how Pittsburgh's aiming it. Because they're saying, go Falcons, because y'all beat us. Not right. because we beat y'all. I can't stand it when people bring politics into football. It's hilarious. That's all I can say. But I gotta say, um, I gotta say, 
there's multiple reasons for me going for the Patriots, but that's that's one of them on a, on a uh, personal level, and then another one, which would make me really eat my foot on saying that. But Steelers did take out Kansas City. They were my original AFC pick. Right. So, with that being said, Patriots took out the Steelers. So, anybody that their fans are rooting for I'm rooting against and anybody that took out the team that took out the team I picked I'm rooting for right. but like I said I, I uh, you know me thinking logically I feel like it's a it's a way better team with the New England Patriots and just think of this game it's a great game Falcons and Patriots because no matter what happens it's going to be a milestone victory for either team because you think about uh, Tom Brady gets his fifth Super Bowl ring. Uh, Patriots, uh, they've been a whole slew of Super Bowls. You know? Yeah, and, and well, it would be his fifth ring. On the other hand, if Matt Ryan, the Falcons win, as a franchise, it's their first ever Lombardi. Right on. So, so either way it goes. It's it's a historical thing. Anytime you have a Super Bowl, it's a historical thing. But it just seems a little more special this time. Because no matter what way it goes, it's a milestone. The Falcons, they finally get on the board. They got a Super Bowl win. They got an MVP quarterback. They got a high-flying offense, a defense. It ain't all that bad. And then the other side, you got Tom Brady, Belichick. They're just continuing to do what they do. And they put another staple in there. You know, and they're just, they are who they are. They proved it once again. All right, so who do you got then? Who, who you, what's your prediction? What's your personal feelings? Man, I don't know. Uh, it's a hard game to predict. Uh, logically, I would say the Patriots win this thing. Just because of everything I know about them, they are who they are. Uh, I know how they prepare. I know Belichick and Brady, it's probably one of the best combinations you could possibly ever have uh, just the way they prepare their game plan I, they're very hard to bet against very hard the Falcons on the other hand they're flying high that offense is something else it's, it's a special thing what they got going for the time being so I guess my head says Patriots but if I could uh, just hand over to Lombardi I'd probably give it to Atlanta. Them being the new kids on the block and all. I feel yeah. you. I feel you. Being the, you know, I think it could be the beginning of another dynasty, perhaps. Maybe. Maybe. It could be. All right. Well, hey, um, what do you think? To, what do you think, if anything, for either team, whatever you want, whether it's your personal um, response what would be if it w if that was to happen? Or if you want to do your logical response, what do you think will be the deciding factor in the game? Either what would be or what will be. Take your pick. And go ahead and uh, let me let me hear what you got. Hmm. I mean, I would have to say what will be. What will be? Yeah. All right. I'm doing the same thing, so you want to go first or you want me to go first? You got to go first. All right, well, it go back, goes back to the classic saying, offense will get you stats, defense will win you games. And oh. offense may win you games, but defense will win you Super Bowls. So oh. that's what I think is going to come down to, the, the edge to the New England Patriots, because like you said, Patriots, they just keep attacking you. You may be able to hold them a couple times, but that the game ain't over. They're they're gonna keep swinging, and eventually, like I said before, it's gonna they're gonna hit you seven seven three seven three three seven. May not be that exact order, but I think that uh, Patriots defense could be the deciding factor. I don't think that Atlanta Falcons defense has what it takes to slow down the Patriots defense like the Patriots have against the Atlanta defense. So that's why I'm rolling with the Patriots um, as far as my prediction. And I'll even say that it may happen early on that 
the defense could sniff out the plan and it we could see like a 38 20. so that's gonna be my score prediction 38 20 not even close new england patriots that very well could happen and it's a good matchup i mean you got the number one scoring offensive football going up against the number one defense as far as points allowed and you know historically the defense wins that in these big games Hey, during the regular season, it's a different story. Everybody's like, rah, 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 points, 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 offense, offense, offense. But then when it, when it comes down to the, the playoffs and the Super Bowl, the mentality changes, and it, I think the defenses get a lot of the show. This is true. I mean, think about um, think about a couple a couple of recent Super Bowls we had. I mean, you had uh, Denver and Carolina. And you, this may have been Peyton Manning playing methodical on the field, but that defense won that game hands down. Then you had um, two years before that, Seattle versus Denver, before they had Von Miller, and before they still were a good defensive team, but they weren't what they were. And you had the Seahawks, which, man, didn't they hit the scene by storm, but were able to hold Denver to how many points was it? Like, I think eleven. It wasn't much. I don't even think it was eleven. It, it, it may have been eight. It may have been uh like sixteen or something like that. Cause I know that there was a touchdown, a two point conversion somewhere in there. It wasn't many points. It no, was not at all. Blowout. It was a. It was, like it was one. I, that was when I was deciding decided on Seattle as my NFC team, not just because of that Super Bowl, but a lot that led up to it. But the fact that so many people were heartbroken in that game, I'm, I'm a villain when it comes to my football fandism. That game was a crazy game with the Seahawks. The way they dominated the Broncos, I mean, it was just crazy. It's and, like they knocked their teeth out and then crushed their skull afterwards. I mean, it was bad. Yeah, that's they, why the following year, totally. that's why the following year, New England Patriots versus Seattle Seahawks made the top five list at number five for best Super Bowls we've ever had. And this you know, is the team that's down, coming in this game, the New England it, Patriots. It comes down to the end of that game. That was a back-and-forth game, very close. Came down to the last play of the game. Yeah. I have to say, Seattle, they probably called the absolute worst play in history. Shot themselves right in the foot, didn't they? Why would you do? Why would you throw that pass at, like that over the middle? One second you got, down. You got more, or no? I'm like, sorry. First and goal. First and goal. First and goal. First and in, in inches. You got Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. You mean to tell me that guy can't run that ball at the most two, maybe three times in a row and get in? You'd be surprised what they the think. Floater pass. It, it just got tipped off. No problem. It was a slam pass. It was a slam pass. I mean, that, then that's New England for you. What they said. What they, you know what they say? They say that New England's the type of team that take Tom Brady out of it. And they're the type of team that they do everything. And they make sure that they capitalize on everything. They're good at every single spot. And they make every play count. And they, they take every opportunity that they get. And that's why that was so easy to read because they're used to it. They're used to sniffing things out before they happen. That's why they were able to make the adjustment. They, they were expecting to run first, too. Then they saw the switch up, made the proper adjustments on the fly, and boom, interception. I mean, yeah, they, they, they do everything. They sniffed it out. They got a whole nose full of that one. I mean, it wasn't even close. Like, you called a slant. And that ball, it just kind of, it was such a short pass. But even just watching it in full speed, it's like that ball was up there for an hour. It feels like. And I don't know who the receiver was for the Seahawks, but that Patriot guy, kind of like a, a no-name dude. He just steps right in front of the pick. Game over. All right, so your, your overall prediction is... Well, let me just hear your your score prediction. What what do you got? Uh, I said thirty-eight twenty. I think it's gonna be a mess. What do you think? Thirty-eight twenty for you. I would have to say. Uh, let me see here. Maybe thirty-four to twenty-seven Falcons. 
34 to 27 Falcons? Yeah. So you honestly think they have enough? Okay. They do. It's just going to come down to can they do it. I'll tell you what. If, they, if their offense does what it does and they are able to hold the Patriots to only 27 points, the Patriots to only 27 points, the only team that you can really say that to. Because normally you win, you, you get 27 points, you're probably winning. Yeah. 20 Yeah. So if they can hold them to only 27 points and do what they do offensively, which if that's what they've done, then they probably have. Hey, we'll see. I mean, but that that's a lot to ask for. And so. you figure just, uh, it does come up to be 34-27. That's a good football game. It's only uh, a touchdown. Yeah. That's the difference. Exactly, too. And it was a touchdown, a two-pointer. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, you're, you're right. It's only one yeah, touchdown and one, uh, and one point. Yep. Points. Yep. Yep. So it could be. Um. Any random uh. Any random things you want to talk about before we get off here? Uh, no, not really. I'm actually getting ready to go to bed. Okay. Well. Um, I say that, but not exactly about to. I'm going to mess on the computer for a few minutes and then go to bed. Well, how about this? Uh, real quick, WrestleMania is around the corner. Um, I know you haven't been watching much lately, but um, you interested in all? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, spoil a few matches that... that I've read are going to be there. So anybody who's a wrestling fan and they're not interested to hear, they want to be surprised. Uh, don't listen any further. But yeah, you want to hear some of the matches they got listed that are supposed to happen. What's that? All right, this is what they got. This is um, as much of the card as I can remember without looking at anything. So WrestleMania, and they they probably will have more matches in this, but this is your what they got. So you got the Andre uh, the Giant Memorial Rumble. They do that every year now. Uh, uh, Royal Rumble, 30 men, and the last one wins a big-ass trophy. Usually gets a big push after that. So, and then um, you got AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon, which I think is a complete waste of AJ Styles. Uh, I'm like, Shane was great and all, but why does he need to be in Royal Rumble at all if that? That's what they're gonna do. So. Yeah, shame it, man. That guy's still around. Yeah, he's a uh, commissioner of Raw or SmackDown now. Mm, I remember him. He had some greats back in the day, but. Yeah. I mean, him and money. Steve. Yeah, yeah. Money, money, money. Hell yeah. That's him. Then you got uh, John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice, which Maurice is The Miz's wife. You ever seen The Miz? Oh, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he's cool. I like him, and he's had a great year this year. Um, Then we got... uh, They're probably going to do something with the tag belts, but they haven't announced anything yet. Um, You got Shaquille O'Neal versus The Big Show in Big Show's retirement match. Yes, he's... I remember you telling me about that, and I remember my reaction was like, the basketball player? Yeah, one big dude against another. Yeah. And it's funny because in this one, the big show's the small guy. Yeah, right. So, that's, that should be fun to watch, but not really a really great match. Um, what else do they got? They got this uh, newer guy. Um, Well, he, he'd probably be newer for you. A guy named Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho, which Chris Jericho is the guy who Kevin Owens has been working with. Um. They've been basically a little duo for a while, and they're setting up the the dissension of them now because this is a match that all the fans want to see. Kevin Owens is the current uh, Universal, which is the Raw uh, top belt, Universal champion, but they got him going in not as a champion in this one. So that means he'll probably lose. They, I think they're, they're going to actually put the belt on Goldberg. Surprised about it. 
but I think they're going to put the belt on. I think they're going to put the belt on Goldberg at Fastlane and then give them that match. Um, what else? Oh yeah, four uh woman match. Uh, four, it's a basically one on one on one on one match for the women title. It's uh Bailey, Sasha Banks, uh Charlotte Flair, and um. This new chick, Nia Jax. Um, that should be interesting. I, I think it's a little much, but that should be interesting. I feel like that should be done on Fastlane. And whatever happens, whatever's supposed to happen at WrestleMania should happen at Fastlane. And then um, have the, the, the real match be Sasha and Bayley, but it is what it is. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's something that you probably have to follow to know more about there. But um, it's only a couple more matches. You got Undertaker versus Roman Reigns, which if done right, this could be a great match for Undertaker to put somebody over as he goes out. And then... Um, I was going to say, that guy's got to be get ready to retire. Very soon. They've been talking about that for the last five years. Well, the last two matches are... um. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt, and this is scheduled to be for the Raw title. Or, uh, no, I'm sorry, the SmackDown title. And, um, then you got Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar, and this is listed as going to be the, um, for the title. So, what a way to give, uh, Brock Lesnar back his two wins and his Royal Rumble embarrassment. By giving Wasn't it like uh, a minute and twenty seconds or something ridiculous. That was the uh, match. At, that was the original match last year, and then he also was in the rumble, and Goldberg knocked him out in twenty seconds. Oh wow! Yeah. I kind of got a feeling that's not gonna go the same way. Well, yeah. I mean, they're they're looking at it as, um, that Goldberg scared or no, um. That Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar are worried that th that maybe Goldberg might just be the one guy that has his number, and Brock Lesnar's issuing one more challenge to to basically give him one more shot. Like Brock's gonna go in this as baby. <laughs> Sad. But yeah, I think that that's pretty much what's gonna happen. Because what better way to give Brock Brock back basically two and a half wins, if not three, if you count the Rumble, um, for a title opportunity at WrestleMania? Yeah. Two losses, two wins to me. Huh. So, I mean, I don't think it's the best card, but up and down, I think it's pretty good. Oh, yeah, there's also Triple H versus Seth, Seth Rollins. And that's something where you really got to follow the storyline to understand. But that could not happen because Man. Seth Rollins got injured. Triple H is still wrestling. Nah, he's, he hasn't since last WrestleMania. But Man. he is listed for this. So if he is, I'm sure he's going to need to get a lot of training in. It's like I, went, like I was saying about uh, certain players, athletes, and professional sports think about these guys and you just in the back of your mind you suddenly think wow this guy's been around all these years and you know it's funny because wrestlers they have to do that on a weekly Triple basis they gotta do that on a weekly basis and they still are able to outlast NFL players oh big time not all of them but some some really do but um alright well I mean yeah, it is starting to get a little late. We've uh, we discussed a lot. I had a really good time with this. Absolutely. And, um, I, yeah, I was going to say, I hope you enjoyed yourself because I'd love to do more stuff like this. Even, uh, you know, we could recap it as well. I mean, this doesn't have to be the last one. I just want to at least do one more football at least. And it was a pleasure well, having you on. And then we got to talk about the Super Bowl. Yeah, we're going to have to recap it as well when I'm down. Um, I'm going to need your help on it because I'll be at work, but I will be able to at least try and watch the review first. Uh, the recap. Okay. But, um, yeah. So, 
there'll be other topics throughout the year. Um, I'm going to try and leave some room on, my, on whatever I do from here for other topics that we could talk about. Um, and, yeah, I mean, shit. This turned out really well. We'll keep it going. But, uh, yeah, like I said, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to, to talk with me on here. And, um, no problem. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'll make sure that you get a chance to view this before it goes up, and I'm about to start working on it now, so um, I'll go ahead and give you a, a salute off. This is my boy Buddy, um, football, uh, a huge football fan, fanatic, and uh, enthusiast, just like myself, just like us all. Yep, so that, that'll be it. Um, good night, everybody, or good morning, or good moment. Let's do that. Good moment to everybody. A little term I uh, learned off the Taz show. I just plugged this show. <laughs> but, um, right. Yeah, but, um, yeah, good moment to everybody, whatever moment it is, and uh, we'll see y'all after the Super Bowl game. Okay, well, all who listen, uh, a good one, and thanks for listening. Peace.